Hey everybody, it's Mr. Bear here, welcoming you to this overview of the two book choices that you're going to have for our final unit of study for this semester, or for this year, or this the sem semester. For the semester, it'll be our last unit. Anyway, I hope that this video will help you to more confidently come to a decision as to which book that you want to dive into uh, for your last unit uh, in English 11. So our two books for this unit are J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye and All American Boys by Jason Reynolds and Brendan Keeley. In this video, I'll be comparing a few different elements of each book, showing you where they're similar and where each title is unique. And in the video, I will be covering setting in terms of time and place, the narrator, or in one case, narrators, the subject matter, generally what each book is about in terms of the plot, the language, and that refers to both the level of language and the style, motifs, and remember a motif is a essentially a thing that is repeated more than once and it has meaning, the genre or the type of story that each one of these books falls into, and then some awards and accolades that each book has received. Now, we in English 11 think that it would be great if you would read both books, but there's just not enough time to do that. So we really need you to make one choice. And uh, you're gonna wanna talk to your teacher to see about any possible conditions under which you might be able to switch after you make that choice. But if there is gonna be that option, that window for that option is gonna be pretty small. So you're gonna to wanna to try to make a good choice right off the bat. So let's get started with setting. The backdrop of these two stories is very, very different in terms of time and place. All American Boys is a very modern novel. It's published in 2015. And it has kind of a, a rip from the headlines feel to it even today. It was published in 2015, but uh, the, the subject matter of this book is very much a 2020 subject, to be sure. Uh, it's set in Springfield, Illinois, which is about as close to a uh, anywhere or any town USA setting as you can get. Springfield, Illinois is actually very close to the geographical center of the United States. Um, and the name of the city, Springfield, is actually common to 34 different US states, including, of course, right here in Oregon. The actual locations uh, featured throughout the book are very commonplace, um, such as a school, uh, various people's homes, and a hospital. So no real exotic locations in this book. Uh, and the story takes place over the course of a week. So the events are all very tightly intertwined. In terms of Catcher in the Rye, uh, this uh, book takes place over the course of three days. So it's even a tighter timeline. Uh, and it takes place in, in early 1950s, Pennsylvania and mostly New York City. The first, uh, about the first seven or eight chapters are in Pennsylvania. And then after that, it's all in New York City in various locations. Um, the time period is much more dated. Uh, there are a lot of, ref not a lot, but there's some references in this story that modern readers might have a little trouble adjusting to. For example, the use of payphones. There really aren't any payphones left, uh, at least not that I've seen in a, in a long time. Um, so there's payphones. Uh, there's also a reference to like elevator operators. It was a, be a person that would be dressed in this kind of formal outfit in a hotel, and their job would be to stand there and to move this lever thing that would move the elevator up and down different floors. Nowadays, I guess it would be pushing the buttons for you, but um, there are no elevator operators anymore. Um, and so these references are kind of dated. It doesn't affect your ability to understand the story. It's just kind of a different time period uh, to be sure. Um, so it is in the early 1950s, and that means that World War II had just ended just a couple of years before. So that um, has an impact kind of on the overall deeper meaning of the book uh, that we may or may not get into. Um, the locations in this story are a little bit more metropolitan, a little bit more urban, uh, more of a big city feel. Um, the first few chapters are at a school, but it's a very fancy private prep school for boys. Um, so in other words, only rich people can go there. Um, and the rest of the locations are around uh, around New York City. Um, and they're, they're different kinds of locations, though, not as commonplace for, for young people like yourselves. So um, we're going to see you know, nightclubs and a hotel. Uh, he spends some time in Central Park and some other iconic kind of New York City uh, locations. His parents live in this big, giant, fancy high-rise apartment where they share an entire floor of a high-rise with just one other family. 
So it gives you an idea of how rich they are and how much um, how much life is different uh, if you live on the 30th floor of an apartment building. Uh, it's definitely different than if you're you know uh, living in a house for sure. All right, so uh, moving on to narrators. Um, in the case of All American Boys, um, there are actually two narrators in this story. Both are high school juniors that are age 17. Uh, one is white and one is black. Um, the white boy is named Quinn, and he is on their school's basketball team. Uh, Rashad, on the other hand, is in ROTC, that is the Reserve Officer Training Corps, kind of an army training type thing. And um, he's an artist. Uh, Quinn is in a single parent home. Um, his father was killed in the Middle East, and his mother works multiple jobs to hold the family together. Rashad is the son of a former police officer, and he has a brother who's an outspoken activist. The stories that the two boys tell are, are very much interwoven, but the chapters are introduced alternately with the name Quinn or the name Rashad to make the narration clear. And so it jumps back and forth between those two boys as the narrator. Catcher in the Rye is narrated by the main character, Holden Caulfield. He's a 16 or 17 year old boy. Uh, he tells the story as a 17 year old, but the events of the book all take place the year before when he was 16. Um, he is a junior in a fancy prep school. He's the son of very rich New York parents. His dad is an important uh, corporate lawyer who's constantly away on business. Uh, his older brother is a screenwriter. He writes for Hollywood movies. Uh, and he has a kid sister named Phoebe. Uh, at the beginning of the, of the novel, he is a student at Pensy Prep, which is a fictional school in a fictional town. It's probably named after uh, Hagerstown, which is actually in Maryland. Um, but it's uh, the, the story is set in Agerstown, Pennsylvania, so there's probably a link there. Um, Holden is uh, a pretty troubled, tormented young man. Uh, he has a lot of pain in his life, in his past that he's dealing with. And so he tends to be very moody. He tends to lash out and overreact. He suffers from these alternating periods of uh, being very high and mighty towards others and then feeling really down on himself and inferior. And that definitely affects his romantic interests and his friendships. Now, in terms of the subject matter, uh, what is each book generally about? What's the plot of the story about? In terms of All American Boys, um, the key event, the thing that's central to the story of All American Boys is an incident of police brutality that occurs outside of a convenience store on an early Friday evening. The incident takes place very, very early in the story. All of the later plot events kind of revolve around and stem from that episode. And the main subject matter of the story is the way various people in the town, like the victim, people in the victim's family, the and the victim himself, and the police officer's family, and the police officer, um, the people in the boys' school, and, and the media, the way that they all react to what's going on and how they all kind of try to come to grips with the larger issues of race and justice. In terms of Catcher in the Rye, the subject is that for the fourth time, Holden has decided to drop out of school. Um, he makes the decision on a Saturday, and according to the book, he has until the following Wednesday when he normally would be going home, but he's taken off a few days early, and he, so he's got this time to, uh, basically he's gonna just hang out, bum around New York, and try to decide what to do. He hasn't told his parents yet, so he's trying to figure out how to do that. But he spends several days on his own in New York City trying to come to this decision. Uh, and so he's, yeah, he's avoiding his parents as he tries to sort out the feelings that he's kind of going through, and there's a lot of them. Uh, in terms of language, um, in, in this particular respect, these, these stories are kind of the same. Uh, when it comes to the language, um, both books are narrated by teen boys. All of the narrators that you're going to hear their voice are all teenage boys around the same age, actually 16, 17 years old. So we could expect that the language is gonna be very informal. They're not gonna speak like a college professor would. Uh, they're gonna speak like a teenage boy. In some cases, there's lots of slang. In the more modern book, All American Boys, there's lots of modern kind of urban slang that gets thrown around uh, back and forth. Um, there's a, a fairly regular stream of cursing or salty language in the in each of these books, including some F-bombs. Um, more so, for to be sure, there's a lot more of them in All American Boys than in Catcher in the Rye, but there is a, a short sequence towards the end of Catcher in the Rye where that word is uh, seen, um, and and it's, it's something that's in the book. 
Um, in terms of the dialogue, it's in both books, it's, it's the attempt is that it's very realistic and natural sounding dialogue, even though Catcher in the Rye, as it's an older book published in 1951, uh, because it's so much older and because the main character Holden talks to a lot of adults in the book, um, it's not quite as informal and, and natural, at least for, for um, high school students' age. Um, so it's going to be one of those things that you probably won't notice too much of a difference, but there there is a difference between the two books when it comes to the overall level of language, but it's not much. Moving on to motifs. And again, motif is the, the idea of the subject that keeps coming up over and over and over in a book. Um, in terms of all American boys, uh, some key motifs that you're going to see repeated over and over, uh, things that the book has to do with often are racism, police brutality, heroism and courage and the definition of those and what they look like, the idea of loyalty, the idea of family and definitely loyalty within family, and then the idea, the question of what exactly constitutes American values. What does it mean to be an American and have American values? Hence the title, All American Boys. And that subject is brought up more than once. In terms of Catcher in the Rye, um, some key themes and motifs that you'll see, uh, lying and deception and the impact of that. The idea of somebody who is, to use a, a phrase, keeping it real uh, versus being phony, right? Somebody who's authentic and genuine versus being a phony. Uh, that's one of Holden Caulfield's favorite words, phony. Uh, the idea of loneliness and isolation and how they can affect somebody. Um, the idea of class expectations, the way rich people are supposed to be and poor people and people in between, and the expectations of gender. If you're a boy, you do this. Or if you're a girl, you do this, that kind of thing. There's quite a bit of that in the book. Uh, and the idea of intimacy and sexuality as two sides of the same coin uh, and, and uh, Holden's search for um, both of those things technically over the course of the book. Uh, all right, moving on to genre. Um, this is another area where both books are very similar. Both of these stories, and so when we talk about the type of book, think of uh, like a mystery as a, as a genre of book or sci-fi or fantasy. Those are all genres of storytelling. So this particular type of storytelling um, is what's called a coming of age story. Um, it's The idea is that you have a narrator who starts out at the beginning of the story uh, not really being sure about what they think about certain things or not sure how they would react or how they would adapt, that kind of thing. And by the end of the story, there's some sort of sense of change. There's some sort of sense of learning something or coming to terms with something. Um, the Germans have a word for it, uh, and we literature scholars have adopted the term. It's called Bildungsroman, which is the German word for coming-of-age story, essentially. Um, so both of these stories kind of fit that mold. Uh, so the idea is that it's a young person trying to find meaning in their life and meaning, meaning for themselves within the society that they find themselves in. So the, the only key difference is that All American Boys, I would say, is a little bit more formulaic of an ending. By the time the story is over with, both Quinn and Rashad have kind of figured out what they, maybe not, they don't have all the answers, but they, they kind of come to an understanding of, of you know, how things are going to go for them or the way that they feel about certain things. Catcher in the Rye, the ending is a little bit more subtle, a little bit more complex. Holden doesn't have all the answers by the time things are, are done with. Um, and, and you can get the sense that he's still pretty troubled. Um, so it's a little bit more of a complex, and I would argue maybe more of a realistic ending, even though All American Boys is very realistic uh, in that sense. Uh, finally, to, to uh, wind things up, um, I thought it would be a good idea for you to hear some of the kind of the awards and accolades that each book has earned, um, rightfully so. Uh, both of these books are, are very, have been very much critically acclaimed. So Catcher in the Rye, the interesting thing about Catcher is that um, it's probably most famous for being notorious. Um, this book has been banned or challenged a lot in the last 30, 40 years. Um, for, the, for the most part, the challenges have to do with the morality of the book, in addition to the language, but the morality of the book, meaning um, that Holden Caulfield is not <laughs> um, an ideal young person to model one's own behavior after. Uh, he smokes, he drinks, he lies to his parents. Uh, he, yeah, there's all kinds of 
bad behavior that he engages in. So he's definitely not a role model. Um, but in any case, it's been it's probably best known as being on the American Library Association's most challenged list uh, pretty much every year for the last 30 years running. Um, it never really won, actually, surprisingly, actually. It never really won a major literary award. It was in 1952. That should say 1952. Sorry, I, that was a typo. Shouldn't be 192. In the year 192, and before the fall of the Roman Empire, was when this book was written. No, um, it was a runner-up to the 1952 American Book Award. It lost to a very famous book called From Here to Eternity. Uh, it was a great novel. But uh, so it's understandable why maybe it didn't win that year, just up against a, 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 another really good book. Since 1952, though, and after a few years after it had come out, um, as the years have gone by, it's been recognized as one of the greatest novels in American history. I would certainly echo that sentiment. Um, uh, George H.W. Bush, the older President Bush, Bill Gates, both are very big fans of um, of the book, uh, citing it as being very inspirational. Uh, and there's a, a famous writer named Adam Gopnik that once said that it was one of only three perfect books in American literature. He said the other two were F. Scott Fitzgerald's The, the Great Gatsby and The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. I'd probably add Of Mice and Men in there too for the Mount Rushmore of American literature. Uh, but so there are a lot of uh, very good writers and a lot of uh, organizations that have said that this is one of those books that people will remember hundreds and hundreds of years from now. And I certainly wouldn't disagree. Uh, All American Boys, being a newer book, um, hasn't gotten the benefit of a lot of hindsight, um, but it has won a lot of acclaim in the five short years since its publication. Uh, the most impressive award that it's received probably is the Walter Dean Myers Award, uh, which was named for a legendary author and promoter of great literature who just passed away just a few years ago. Uh, and winning the Walter uh, signifies a book that celebrates diversity and excellence in literature for young people. So it's specifically uh, an award that, that is trying to re reward authors that write meaningful things and excellent things for younger readers. Uh, this book also received the Coretta Scott King Award. She was the uh, widow of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, and this award recognizes um, those who fight for unity and nonviolent social change. Um, in addition to that, pretty much every major reviewing organization, Publishers Weekly, Goodreads, The New York Times, The Chicago Tribune, basically any publication that, that produces a list of great books uh, and recommends good books to read has given this book highest honors. Um, and what that tells us is, because it only came out just a few years ago, that this is not just a good book, but it's also an important book for our current culture, especially for 2020. Um, most notably in terms of an individual reviewer, uh, Lori Hulse Anderson, who you might know is the author of Speak, a book that many of you may have read in your freshman year here at DHS. She said, she had this to say about uh, about uh, All American Boys. She said, this life-changing, nation-changing book is written with fire and love and courage. Read it, weep, and then share its power with everyone you know. So there you have it. Even though these books are very different when it comes to the setting and the overall subject matter, I think what you'll find is that they are both very, very similar in terms of kind of the overall meaning of the story and the overall arc of the story, which is that the young people in the story are both searching for meaning and really they're searching for identity. The, both of these books are very much about answering the question, who am I? How do I, how do I see myself and how do I fit in to this big world that I'm in that I'm having trouble making sense of. I can guarantee though that both of these books are uh, unique. Uh, they're unlike any book that you've read before most likely uh, and that they're gonna you're gonna be able to find something to connect to no matter which title that you choose. So the only question that's left for you is which book are you gonna choose? Enjoy and we'll see you later.